Section 5120 refers to what we call constitutional corporations. Literally, it mentions foreign corporations and trading or financial corporations formed within the limits of the Commonwealth. A corporation is an entity created and constituted by law. It has legal personality distinct from the individuals who created it. We mentioned this in the video appearing on your screen when we look at the basics of section 5120. The question of this video then is, how can I characterize a constitutional corporation? How can I identify whether that particular legal person is a corporation for the purposes of section 5120? Hello everyone, my name is Renato Costa, this is Aussie Law, and today we will see the two tests that the High Court of Australia uses to characterize a constitutional corporation. When we read section 5120, there are two main questions that we need to face. One, what are the corporations with respect to which the power exists? And two, what kinds of laws may be enacted with respect to such corporations? Today, I'm focusing on the first question, the one that deals with the types of corporations that are characterized as constitutional corporations. In my next video, I will answer the second question. So if you are not subscribed to Aussie Law yet, you can click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you do not miss my next video. Well, the first case to deal with this issue was Herbert Parker. The High Court of Australia adopted the so-called reserve powers reasoning to exclude from the meaning of section 5120 all kinds of domestic corporations. The idea was that even if they could be fairly characterized as, for example, a trading corporation, if they only engaged in intrastate trade, that corporation was excluded from the scope of section 5120. But, as you know, this is not the predominant understanding anymore. Since after the engineer's case, the High Court of Australia does not adopt this kind of reasoning that reserves certain powers to the states. So, how can we characterize a constitutional corporation today? There are two main approaches that the High Court uses. Let's call them the Constitutive Purposes Test and the Current Activities Test. The Constitutive Purpose Test says that the nature of a constitutional corporation is determined by the purpose for which the corporation is created. When a corporation is created, it will lay out in the Constitution what are its main objectives, what the corporation exists for. These purposes then can help us broadly ascertain whether that corporation is a trading or financial corporation. If a corporation is created for municipal purposes, for example, it could be created to help the local government in the administration and the execution of its affairs. In doing so, it could engage in certain trading activities. But the primary purpose of the corporation was to support the local government. So, this would not be characterized as a trading corporation according to this first test. The constitutive purpose of the corporation was not to trade, but to do something else. A domestic corporation that engages with trade but was created for the purposes of helping the local government was not going to be characterized as a trading corporation according to the constitutive purposes tests. And this that I just mentioned was the nub of a case called St. George County Council from 1974. In this case, the majority took the view that even though the municipal corporation sold electricity to consumers within the county, the municipal corporation had not been constituted for that purpose and thus did not fall within the scope of section 5120. The current activities test, however, says that the ends which such a corporation seeks to serve by trading are irrelevant to its description. So one is not supposed to look at the constitutive purpose but to the current activities of the corporation. Hence we call this test the current activities test. If the trading activities form a substantial or a not insignificant part of the corporation's operation then that corporation can be characterized as a constitutional corporation within the meaning of section 5120. In the Adamson's case, the High Court of Australia decided that the two Aussie rules clubs were constitutional corporation, despite their constitutive purposes being for sports and recreational ends. 
because the sports clubs traded quite often and this trading activity was not so slight or incidental to some other principal activity but a substantive part of the corporation's life, the High Court of Australia affirmed that they were indeed a trading corporation. Justice Murphy in the majority said that the description trading corporation does not mean a corporation which trades and does nothing else or in which trading is the dominant activity. As long as the trading is not insubstantial, the fact that the trading is incidental to other activities does not prevent it being a trading corporation. In a joint judgment by Justice Mason, Murphy and Dean in the State Superannuation Board case, it was said as the carrying on of that undertaking by the Constitutional Corporation requires or involves engagement in trading activities, there is no difficulty in characterizing the corporation as a trading corporation when it engages in the activities. The same current activities test was fundamental to the decision of the High Court of Australia in the Tasmania Dam case. We have a video about the Tasmanian Dam case, so click the link in your screen to watch that video as well. Well, I have said that both tests can be used by the High Court of Australia and that is true because, look, if the corporation is created to trade, if I adopt the constitutive purposes test, I can easily say that the corporation is a trading corporation, even if it hasn't engaged in trade yet. However, the High Court of Australia will tend to keep on adopting the language used in the second test. Under the current activities test, one does not look at the constitutive objective of a corporation, but we look at its activities. If trading is the predominant activity, if it is a substantive part of the business, or at least not an insignificant aspect of the corporation's life, then that corporation will be characterized as a constitutional corporation. So, ultimately, the corporation will be characterized as a constitutional corporation if it meets the criteria of being constituted for trading purposes, even without having traded yet, or if its trading activities are not insubstantial. This was the position adopted by the court in Fencott and Miller from 1983. If you want to learn more about section 5120, I think you should look at one of the most important cases ever decided by the High Court of Australia, the Work Choices case. To understand what that case was all about, check out the video appearing on your screen, and I'll see you there. Ciao.